Hello and a big welcome back to the Wee Lorda channel. Today I'm going to be making a traditional Scottish scotch pie. These are so, so delicious. <laughs> They're quite calorific though, so I don't have them that often, but um, you get them in our bakers all around here and they are just so good. So I'm actually gonna be making a really easy version in this video um, using a pre-made short crust pastry. Traditionally, you would have used quite a rich pastry for this pie and um, I'm going to make another video in the future where I'm going to be making the pastry and making up the pie as well. But So this is just a real easy version to get you guys started with this recipe. It is so, so delicious. Um, I'm going to be using minced lamb, and but if you can't get your hands on that, you can actually use minced beef um, instead. Traditionally, in these, these pies were made with um, minced mutton, I believe, or finely chopped mutton, going uh, way back. But I think around about here, um, the steak mince is probably more popular than um, minced lamb. But I really, really like the lamb taste in this recipe. So I would recommend giving it a go if you enjoy lamb. And um, if not, you can use beef mince. It's totally up to you. So, so let's get started on our delicious traditional Scottish scotch pies. So for these easy scotch pies, and to make about five or six of them, you're going to need butter for greasing the pie or cake tins, whatever you're using, and a tablespoon of butter for cooking up the mince, three small onions, and they need to be finely chopped as well, four to, about, about four to six tablespoons of water, 500 grams of lamb or beef mince, two teaspoons of salt, pepper, two tablespoons of chopped parsley, two tablespoons of plain flour, some milk for brushing the pastry before it goes in the oven, and two packs of pre-made short crust pastry. I'm actually using a fan oven and I'm going to put my set in at 170, so you're going to want to preheat your oven at 170. So you're going to need some pie tins which look something like this. Now these were the smallest, or cake tins rather, these were the smallest cake tins that I could find. I believe they're about 10 centimetres. Um, in size, I will check that and I will put a link in the description box below for you for these actual tins because I got them off of Amazon. You can use pie, pie um, specific tins but I just find these were so easy to find um, so I just use these and they're really good that they, the bottom pops out and makes them easy to use. So you're just going to want to grease your tins up really well as I have done here with some butter. We're then going to move on to chopping up our onion really finely. So I don't usually show you preparing the ingredients but I just wanted to show you um, how finely I have chopped up the onion just so you can get a good idea. So we're looking for something like that. It's not like really, really fine, um, but it still has a little bit of bite about it, but it does cook down really well um, in the pan. So we're just gonna add all of our butter um, into the pan here, and we're just gonna melt that down. And then we're going to add in our onions. And the butter just really helps to sweeten everything up and it just adds a little bit of flavor. And, it, and when you add the water and the flour, it just adds a little bit of sauce in the pie as well. Not, not They're not saucy, but it just adds a little bit of um, moistness to the pie. It's so, so delicious. So we're gonna cook our onions on a medium heat for a couple of minutes. And then we're gonna add a little bit of water in, just enough water so that you're cut just, just above the, the sort of level of the onions in the pan. And this is just going to give us a nice, um, or an ever so slight sauce in our pie. And this is just gonna to add to a nice consistency in the pie itself once we add our flour in as well. So if you just pop your mince into the pan Now I just want to add as well, I do actually wash my hands in between using raw meat. Um, it's just the way I edit my videos, it doesn't look like I do, but I definitely do. <laughs> so if you just um, stir your mince around and just break it up as well in the pan. And you might need a little bit more water. If you do, just add in a couple of more tablespoons of water if you feel that it's sticking a little bit or if you feel like you don't have any liquid left at all, then feel free to go and add a couple more tablespoons of water. Because you do want a little bit of liquid just so that we have something to kind of create a tiny amount of sauce in this pie. Now 
So we're going to season the mince and onions really well with some black pepper and with some salt as well. Now you just want to add plenty of seasoning. Um, my personal taste is to add lots of black pepper because I feel that the scotch pies, especially up here anyway, um, are quite peppery so I like to add lots of black pepper into mine. You can use other spices as well but I've kept this recipe really basic um, just as an easy uh, scotch pie recipe but if you want to add other spices feel free to go ahead and experiment at this stage as well for seasonings. So we're just going to keep cooking that down until it is almost cooked through and if you just keep breaking up any lumps as well because you don't want any lumps in there and we're going to give it a good dose of salt so we're going to pop all of our salt in there and we're going to give it a good stir around So we're now going to chop up our parsley and just add that into our pan. I just love a bit of parsley in here, um, just works so so well. But if you don't like parsley, feel free to leave it out at this stage, um, you don't have to use parsley in yours. And this is the pastry that I, ha I am using for the pies. So while the mince is cooking down a little bit with the parsley in the pan, we're just going to roll out our pastry. If you're using your own homemade short crust pastry or um, your pie pastry, then feel free just to roll it out to a similar kind of shape and thickness. And we're just going to use the base of our um, tins just to cut out the circles for the base of the pies. So you want to put your tin as close to the edge as possible just so that you are not wasting any pastry. So once we've done a couple of lids we're going to cut out our sides and we're just going to cut them out by using our tin on the edge of the pastry and then we are just rolling it down to get a rough idea of the length and also using the tin for the height as well. You want the pastry to come up to the um, top of the tin. So if you just repeat that for all the sides of your tins, for the bases and for the lids, we're gonna cut out um, in exactly the same way as we cut out our bases. So if we just pop the bases into the bottom of our um, tins, and I'm just using a little bit of milk around the edge of the base. And this is just gonna to help to seal the side onto the side of the pie. And we're just gonna pop the side in like so. And if you just use your finger, just to press on the inside, just to press the side gently down onto the bottom of the base so that we're kind of joining the two pieces of pastry together. Now I'm not going to pretend to be any kind of pastry expert, I am definitely not, <laughs> but I am learning loads of pastry skills as I go along, so um, forgive me if I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> so if you just repeat the process for all of your cake tins, and then you should have all of your tins ready. And I'm also just making a couple of holes in the lids. You can do this when the lids are on the pies or when they're um, off the pies like I have done here. So I've just made a few holes in the top and I'm just setting all the lids aside. So we're just gonna add our parsley in. Our mince has been cooking away for a few minutes while we were doing our pastry and our pies. And we're just gonna pop our parsley in because it doesn't need much cooking time, the parsley. It really is just for flavor. Um, so we're just going to add that in and give that a, little, a good stir around. So our mince should be cooked by now um, and it should be of a really nice consistency as well. And there should still be a little bit of liquid in the bottom of the pan. If you don't have any liquid, um, again, please feel free to add in a couple of tablespoons because we do want a little bit um, just to create a little bit of texture in this pie once we put in the flour. 
So feel free to taste your mince as well for seasoning and it's really important to do that when it's cooking. So I'm just having a little taste here and of course I love the tastings. <laughs> And we're just popping in our flour at this stage as well and we're just going to give that a good stir through. So just make sure your flour is really well mixed through the whole mixture. And this will thicken your liquid almost straight away and that is totally okay. Um, that is kind of what we're after. And it just really com helps to combine everything together um, and just gives a really good consistency. So if you start filling up your pies, um, your pie cases, and so we want to fill them up about um, almost a half to three quarters of the way full. They definitely do not need filled to the top. You won't get five or six pies out of this if you're filling them to the top. And traditionally, Scots Scotch pies have a really um, deep sort of edge on them. So they're quite good for um, holding that way so you don't want them going right up to the top if you're looking for the traditional look of course <laughs> and it's also really good to have that um, deep um, top as well because you can add things like gravy and beans and potatoes and all sorts of other things on top of the pies once they're cooked as well so if you just fill your um, tins up with your mince like this I'm only showing three here but you should get about five or six out of this recipe and we're just going to use a little bit of milk again just to pop around the edge of our lid and that's going to help seal the lid down onto the pie so if you just pop your lid on the inside and if you just press lightly into the edges just so that you are joining the pieces of pastry together and if you haven't put a hole in the top at this point then feel free to use a knife or something to make a hole in the top of the pie so if you just repeat the process and add all your lids onto the pies So I'm actually just using my fork here just to make sure the holes are big enough on the top of the pies and I'm just going to brush the pies with a little bit of milk so you can use your finger to put the milk on or you can use a pastry brush if you have one to hand as well. And we're just going to pop those in the oven for 25 minutes and they should look something like this when they are completely cooked. So they should be nicely browned and the mince is already cooked inside so we're kind of just um, cooking the pastry itself. So we're just going to cut through just to show you the inside and these are so so delicious. And it should look something like this. The onions are melt in your mouth texture. The parsley has completely blended in with everything else and the flavour is just so so good. These go really well with um, seasonal vegetables. Um, as I was saying with beans or potatoes, um, mash, gravy, onion gravy, uh, they work well with loads of things. Uh, they're really nice to take out on a picnic as well or um, to pop in a lunchbox. They travel really well because they are fully enclosed and they just make a really delicious snack. My kids absolutely love them. I don't make them all the time because as I said they are a little bit calorific um, but they are so delicious. I hope you've enjoyed um, this easy recipe. Next time I promise I will try to make the traditional Scotch pie pastry for you all. So I hope you enjoyed making your own Scotch pie and hope you enjoyed this easy version as well. Um, as I said before, I'm going to be making a traditional Scotch Scotch pie using um, making the pastry from scratch in another video. So you can maybe um, work on your pastry skills for that and, <laughs> and you can make the pastry from scratch next time. But this is just a really easy version to get you started and it's just so quick to make and they make a really nice lunch or um, dinner treat as well. When I was young, we went to the football a couple of times and it's, it's a real traditional thing at the Aberdeen Football Stadium to at half time to go for a cup of bovril and a scotch pie. And it's just such a delicious combination. Um, it's so, so good. So if you can get your hands on bovril, 
I would make yourself a warm glass of that um, to enjoy with this scotch pie. You can also top the pie with beans or gravy or like an onion gravy would also work really well and you can serve it up with vegetables or even a salad if you're feeling super healthy. <laughs> you might need a salad actually to go along with these because they are quite calorific. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you took a photo please feel free to tag me on Instagram and I'll share on my stories and tag you. Um, I love to see your foodie creations and if you enjoy traditional Scottish recipes Please, please, please pop over to my website, it's angiemill.com and you can download a copy of my free traditional Scottish cookbook from there. So it's got 10 of my favourite Scottish recipes and my delicious cull and skink recipe is in there so don't miss it because that is so so good. It's um, worth picking it up for that alone. So it'll be delivered straight to your inbox if you pop in your email address. And if you enjoyed this video please feel free to give it a big thumbs up and if you hit the um, subscribe button and the little bell next to it then you'll be notified on my new videos coming out in the future. So I have lots of delicious things coming your way. So take care everyone and I hope to see you all again soon. Lots of love. Bye bye.